good to see everybody. Glad to be here. Um, going to be taking some questions, and I am super pumped. Let me see if I can get a copy. Super pumped. Uh, today, my brand new book, Make Change, comes out, and uh, I'm going to be signing copies and taking your questions. Um, thank you all so much for your support. You know, right before I got ready to go live here, uh, Anna, good to see you. Uh, right before I got ready to go live, uh, we just saw that there was a horrible explosion in Lebanon. And we don't know if it was an attack, but I, I just saw the video and it was just awful. And um, just sending my heart and love and support to all of my friends who are either there or if you have friends there. Um, I am super excited that today my book uh, is coming out. Melissa, thank you. You said your book is getting delivered today. Uh, Erica, Betty, and others, good to see all of you. Um, if you have not yet ordered it, please do. But here in the description, there is a link where you can get a signed copy of the book. And I'm donating all of my proceeds, all the profits uh, from this event are going to a group, a civil rights group that I love and respect so much called Until Freedom. And uh, you can still purchase a copy today. Yeah, Carol, I, I, I'm hearing that it could have been a fireworks factory there in Lebanon, but we, we don't know. So uh, I'm watching. I'm watching closely. So I'm going to be signing copies of the book for the next hour. And I'm going to be taking your questions as well. Uh, many of you who already purchased uh, a signed copy of the book sent some questions, and I'm going to be taking all of your questions. Um, thank you all for ordering. If you've already ordered the book and uh, you want to get a signed copy, if you click the link that I shared here, I'll sign it for you right here and right now, and all of my profits uh, from this event and for any of the events that I'm doing, I'm donating to some of the best civil rights organizations in the country. And so thank you so much, uh, Charles. Thank you so much for ordering two copies. Uh, I've got a couple pins here and I'm going to take your questions. OK, uh, let me know if you can see me and hear me clearly. Um, my family and I are home right now. All five kids are home. Uh, my wife is here. We're working. We're all pulling on the internet and there's like a tropical storm outside. And so, um, yeah, love and appreciate you all. Uh, let me make sure we're ready to go because I'm ready. Um, you know, yeah, okay, cool. We are, re we are ready to go and I've got your questions as well. Uh, you all asked some really, really good questions. Uh, Tyler, there is an audio book. Yes, you can get the audio book now. Um, gonna be signing all of these for you and uh, they will go in uh, copies that we will mail directly to you so uh, I'm grateful let me make sure my pen is working properly hold on ah great um, good good Jason appreciate you um, let me see here these are these are called book plates and they will go inside of the book. And so anybody um Chuck Chuck says he wants a copy so you can burn it. Well Chuck if you buy a copy now, you can burn it and I'm just fine with that. <laughs> Chuck, you buy a copy, all the profits and proceeds go to a great a great group. Chuck, you can do whatever you want to do with it. <laughs> okay? Uh Usman, uh yeah, you can order it from the UK. Absolutely. Um, but yeah, we have all types of places where you can purchase it. Let me start signing, but let me pull up your questions. Uh, for everybody who, uh, no, Chuck's not tough. Chuck, Chuck has, uh, internet courage. <laughs> you know what that means? You know, Chuck is tough on uh, Facebook comments. And so, um, that, you know, we see people like Chuck all the time. Um, let me pull up your questions because I was, blown away by by some of the questions that you submitted uh okay so i have your questions up and uh, you all said you can see me and hear me just fine um chris from san francisco chris asked 
Uh, what are my favorite books that I've read and why? Um, yeah, Keyboard Gangsters. <laughs> yeah, I'll tell Ray you all said hello. Um, all good. My pen is working. Pen is working great. Uh, my favorite books, well, The Autobiography of Malcolm X is my favorite book of all time. I, I read it when I was 15 years old, and I read it when I was in like a pivotal moment in my life and really needed that. And um, um, in the audio book for this book, Malcolm X's daughter, uh, Ilyasa Shabazz, helps to introduce one of the chapters, which is amazing. And uh, I value her friendship so much. But uh, so that's my, the autobiography of Malcolm X is like my all time favorite book. But there are a couple of books that uh, I would say have been super important for me. Um, I would say three books. The, the first is a book called Slavery by Another Name. And um, it won the Pulitzer Prize, and it talks about how at the end of the Civil War, while slavery as we know it uh, was abolished, that a brand new system of slavery was created in its place, and it was basically mass incarceration. And uh, the, the author of that book, uh, Slavery by Another Name, was actually uh, a, a white man who wrote for the Wall Street Journal and found um, these mass graves from, from, from what they call convict leasing programs, which was basically just another way of, of saying slavery. And he found these mass graves all throughout the South where basically people were, were worked to death in, pri in prisons but they were work camps, basically. Um, so Slavery by Another Name is is a very important book to me. Um, I would say the second most important book is, for me, and these aren't in order necessarily, is The New Jim Crow. And uh, a lot of people have, a lot of people have purchased The New Jim Crow, but haven't actually read it. And uh, I want you to purchase it and read it. It's shaped me in profound ways. And then the the last um, the last book is a book that um, that doesn't get a lot of pub, but it should. And it actually also won the Pulitzer Prize just two years ago. It's a book called Locking Up Our Own, and it's it's only controversial for one reason. the uh, The author of the book is James Foreman Jr. and He's a, a, a law professor at Yale Law School. He's my friend. His father, James Foreman, was a legend in the civil rights movement. And um, he talks about the role. This is in the book Locking Up Our Own. He talks about the role of the Democratic Party and the role of um, local black mayors and black city councils in building mass incarceration. And... There's a reason why that book is not super popular because it's a hard read because sometimes we want to reduce police brutality and mass incarceration to Democrat and Republican. And that's not it. Democrats and Republicans work together to build mass incarceration. And uh, this book, Locking Up Our Own, really unpacks the role of the Democratic Party in building mass incarceration. It's a profound book. You got to read it. Um, let me see here. We've got some more, some more questions. Uh, yeah, Tracy, Tracy, uh, I see your question there about whether or not I'd watch the untold history of America. Yeah, I saw that. That's powerful. Um, somebody asked as a white woman, how do I, this is a uh, Marlon from Long Beach. What's up, Marlon? Thank you for, thank you for purchasing, a. A signed copy of Make Change. I appreciate you. Um, Marlon asked, as a white woman, how do I address my black peers who support Trump and don't and don't believe in white supremacy? Well, Marlon, you can't address everybody. <laughs> Everybody's not reachable. Um, 
let me tell a quick story. Let me let me sign a few more and uh, but let me tell you a quick story. Hold on one second. Um, I have a hard time telling uh, smart stories and signing the books at the same time. <laughs> uh, let me sign a few. And then I want to tell you all this story. It's uh, it's actually this story I'm about to tell you is not in my book, but it shaped the way that I that I see the world in in, in so many ways. Um, in in 2015, uh, so over the past few years, I've traveled to 47 different states, organizing, teaching, speaking, learning, and I talk about all these lessons in my book. And I traveled to Milwaukee to speak at Marquette University. And uh, I spoke for several hours and I had slides and videos and, uh, and, and all types of things to kind of help, uh, help make the presentation great. And um, at the end of my presentation, there was a middle-aged white woman who came up and uh, she had she waited in line. She wanted to speak to me and she had, she had questions, but really she wanted to say something to me. And she, she was there the whole time I spoke for hours. Like I spoke for almost three hours and she came up to me and she said, listen, I don't believe a thing that you just spoke about. And other people were around her and they were getting frustrated that she said this. And I, I said, I told everybody, you know, calm down. It's okay. You know, ma'am, Tell me specifically what you what you heard or saw that you don't agree with or that you think is not true. And she said, oh, it's all of it. I don't agree with any of it. So I still had my projector remote and I went through my slides and, and I was slightly irritated, but like not attitude. No, I said, ma'am, I'm just going to go through the slides and you show me the slide that you disagree with. And I was like, is it this one? Is it this one? These are facts. Like these are charts and graphs with, with research. And she said, no, listen, it's not just one slide. I disagree with all of it. And like, so there was a slide showing the growth of mass incarceration from 1970 to 2010. I was like, ma'am, this is just a graph showing the number of people in jail and prison over the past 40 years. So you can disagree with it. But it's just, this is just a number. These are facts. This is a chart. And, and we engaged for a little bit. And she said that she had heard Sean Hannity say something about me on Fox News. And uh, she was like, listen, uh, Black Lives Matter is a, it's a fraud. This is fake news. It's not real. And I tried to reason with her. And she had just sat through three hours of my best presentation. Okay. And by the time I finished my conversation with her, she was no more, she was no closer to believing anything that I said or presented. People were giggling and laughing at her and stuff. And, and I left there, I was actually deeply discouraged because I had just given my very best presentation and tried to reason with her face to face and nothing I said got through to her. And I flew back home. Uh, we were living here in New York at the time and I flew back home and I had a, what I thought was a bit of an epiphany. I, I realized, uh, and this is kind of crude. The, the original question was, what can I say to somebody who supports Trump? Okay. I realized after this woman said through three hours of my presentation, um, after I tried to reason with her face to face and she didn't budge, what I realized is that all of us are on a scale. Uh, and I could give this illustration in a couple ways. Let's say, let's say this is liberal to conservative, and or let's say this is anti-racist all the way to racist. How many of you who see yourselves as anti-racist? How many of you? could go to a workshop that would make you racist. Or if you're liberal, how many of you are a presentation away from becoming conservative? And like, if you are anti-racist, 
are there any books or YouTube videos that could make you racist? And, and so what I realized is this woman had just sat through three hours of my best presentation and she didn't budge her position. And at first I was judgmental, but then I realized if I sat through three hours of a presentation, there's no presentation that could make me racist. There's no presentation that could make me into a white supremacist. There's no presentation that can make me into a conservative. And in that sense, it's hard to get people to budge from the positions they already have. And what I have found is Donald Trump has about 65 million people voted for Donald Trump to be president. But about, about 30 million of those people like really, really believe in Donald Trump. And it doesn't matter what he says, and it doesn't matter what you say to those people. They're not changing. They, they believe in him. They love him. They support him. And that's just how it is. And so my long answer to your question is some people you just can't get through to. And, and you can try. Uh, if they're your friends or family, you can try over time. But uh, some people are really hard to break through to. Um, let me get some more of your great questions here. Uh, Michael in Dallas uh, says, Sean, I just wanted to offer my support and thank you for the inspiring, crucial work you're doing. Michael, I appreciate you, man. Appreciate you so very much. Uh, Susie, who is in uh, Eagle Mountain, Utah, Susie asks, how do we get the media to go back to reporting the truth instead of sensationalizing events and pushing fear? Susie, the media is, if you talk to super liberal Americans, I, I don't consider myself liberal as much as I do uh, progressive. Um, like we are as frustrated with mainstream media as a lot of conservatives. And you have to understand that media is a, Media is a for-profit venture, and um, you know because of that, they often have corporations and ratings at the center of what they do. And as long as you're getting news from sources that were designed to make money off of the news, they're going to be sensational and they're going to push fear. Fox does this, MSNBC and CNN do this. And and that's why I try to be as independent as I can. Uh, let me see here. Yeah, media is all, Tracy said the media has always been that way. Um, I uh, I saw some of your feedback on my last illustration. Uh, Cynthia, uh, Cynthia asked how you could get um, a signed copy. I'm signing copies now for people, and there should be a link here in the description from my friends at, um, at live signing and any, any profits or proceeds that I gain from this, I'm donating a hundred percent of them to, uh, my friends at until freedom. I think one of the, the most brilliant civil rights organizations out right now. Um, hold on. I have these, these questions are currently I'm taking questions. I'll get to some of the Facebook questions shortly. Currently, these questions are from people who uh, signed up to get a book. If you want to get a signed copy, if you just click the link here in the description, you can still sign up and I'll sign you a copy now, okay? Um, Brianne from Santa Barbara. Hey, Brianne. Brianne says, without question. Oh, thank you, Brianne. Brianne says, without question. The work you do is beyond powerful and absolutely necessary. I cannot wait to learn from you and your book. Thanks for all that you do. Thank you, Brianne. Um, Jay in Livonia, uh, if I hope I said that right, in Livonia, Michigan. Um, Jay says, you don't have a question. You just said, um, as a Latino man uh, uh, raising two black teenage boys, thank you. Yeah, shout out to you, Jay. Uh, Roxanne, who, um, this is a good question. Roxanne asked, 
Uh, hold on one second. Um, Roxanne asks, she says, hi, Sean. Would you work with Bernie in a Biden White House? My hope is to see you both there advising next to other powerful voices leading change. That's a great question. Um, so I don't think Joe Biden um, would ever have me advise him in any capacity. I don't say that, uh, Roxanne. I'm not being negative. Um, okay, Usman, I'll get to your question in a minute, okay? Um, you know, I don't think, uh, Roxanne, that Joe Biden would ever have me advise him. Um, I'm grateful that Bernie has found a way to have a working relationship with Joe Biden, but I've been such a big public critic of Joe Biden in, in the attempt to have him change his policies, uh, that I'm, I'm deeply concerned that I would never be an advisor to him. If Joe Biden asked for my advice or if Bernie asked for my advice with Joe Biden, I'd be glad to give it. And I mean that earnestly. Sel uh, Selena, who is from California, Selena asked, how do we get entrenched unions uh, to be run by and in service of rank and file members who are not single issue voters? Selena, that's a great question, actually. Uh, again, Selena's question is important, and I don't know how many of you who are watching this are are members of unions. Uh, if you are a member of a union, just let me know in the comments. Um, you know, uh, Missy, your book can arrive today, but you can purchase a, an assigned book here, okay? And I'll I'll sign it for you, and all the proceeds go to a great civil rights organization that I'm working with. Um, Many people in unions have learned that the unions really don't represent the rank and file people. Good, good. I see several union members here. And, um, you know, unions vary. I love, I work with unions all over the country. The quality of a union varies from city to city, from office to office, from state to state. Uh, it also depends on what industry you're in. Uh, some people, I see your, your comments now, some people who are a part of unions, uh, their experience is actually great and their union leaders and reps are fighting for them all the time. But other people um, feel like the unions don't represent them at all. And um, that's something that you you have to organize, thankfully, organize union members and sometimes you have to vote out leadership or vote in new leadership as well but it's important um misha asked a good question uh uh pristina if you want to if anybody if any of you want to order a signed copy i would be more than glad to sign it for you right now if you just click the link here in the description i'm going to be here i am going to be here for at least 37 more minutes uh, signing books uh, for the next hour. And so I I'm glad to sign them to you. Uh, I see someone named Smith just like threw out the word sheep. Nobody here is sheep. I encourage everybody here to think for themselves. Uh, be critical. Uh, do your research. Um, so, you know, ignore the foolishness in the comments. Uh, but if you want to get a signed copy, just click the link here in the description and I'm going to be signing even after I finish this event, I'm going to be signing copies all night long. And so if you use that link to, uh, sign a copy. Okay. Christine, um, uh, uh, Michael, if you want to, if you want to order a signed copy here, you can do that too, man. Okay. And, um, don't, yeah, don't worry about it. And uh, yeah. And if you can't, uh, don't jam your anybody. Don't jam yourself up financially to uh, to get a signed copy. OK, uh, I did this because so many of you asked for signed copies and it just gives me a chance to to interact with you. Uh, and the team um, uh, at Premier Collectibles that we're working with here, they're going to send all of you um, uh, signed copies of the book. OK, so. 
Let me take some more of your questions, all right? Let me see here. Um, oh, okay. Antoine from, uh, from Sydney in New South Wales uh, said that this is a gift for your wife, Grace, and that you're looking forward to reading it. You said, thank you. You thank me for my actions in tackling social injustice and ingrained racism and says, stay safe. Thank you, Antoine, for that. And send your love to, uh, to Grace, send my love to Grace and your family. And thank you for, for purchasing a signed copy. Again, um, for anybody who wants a signed copy, if you just click the link here, um, you can purchase a signed copy now and, uh, there's a link in the description and, and I'll be signing them for the next hour or so. Okay. And if you aren't able to purchase one today, I'll try to find another date. We have plenty of books and copies and just so people know, um, uh, I don't make a dollar off of signing any of these books. I don't, I don't even make profit off of selling the book. I got paid to write it and so I've already been paid. I got paid to write the book. When the book sells, I don't make a a percentage. I'm promoting I'm promoting this book because I poured my heart and soul into it and I believe that if you read it, it'll teach you how to make change in the world and I share my story. Um and so I can't wait for you to have it, but I'm not I don't get I'm not wealthy. And I don't get rich off of the selling of this book or the signing of this book. And any proceeds that I get from signing this book, I'm donating to a great organization. So uh, just to be clear, um, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, so thank you, Antoine. And, and we'll get a signed copy to your wife, Grace. Uh, Stacy from right here in New York asks, how can we eliminate private campaign financing. And Stacy says, this is the only way to have true democratic representation. One person, one vote. Stacy, I actually agree. If you missed that, Stacy said, how can we eliminate private campaign financing? Um, New York City has tried to eliminate a lot of the outside influence of campaign financing, but um, both the Democratic Party and the Republican Party are so funded by uh, rich donors, rich backers, that both parties are addicted to this, you know, are addicted to big money. And in fact, um, the Democratic Party just had an opportunity to put some new rules in place that really helped the integrity of the financing Stacy and uh, and they didn't pass the rules. And so both parties, Democratic and Republican parties, don't do nearly enough to get money out of out of campaigns. Um uh Eric who is in Southampton, uh Pennsylvania asked if there are any new house candidates that I would endorse. Uh and and Eric mentioned Julie Oliver and Mike Siegel. Eric, I don't know. Right off the top of my head, I don't know Julie Oliver or Mike Siegel. But you also asked me to check out a woman who is my friend, Melba Pearson, who is running for what they call state attorney in Miami. That's just the district attorney of Miami. Um, today, actually, I, our organization, Real Justice, uh, this is to you, Eric, is helping run several campaigns for district attorney in Detroit, in St. Louis, in Orlando, in Honolulu. So I'm working on a lot of district attorney's races all over the country. Um, I really love the organization Justice Democrats. And uh, I generally agree with all of their endorsements. I'm, uh, I've endorsed Corey Bush, who's running for Congress in St. Louis. Uh, I endorsed my friend Jamal Bowman, who's, who, who ran for Congress uh, here in New York, uh, but we have to get good people in Congress and in all positions. Let me see how many questions we have so I can pace myself here. 
Let me refresh the page to make sure I got all your new questions, okay? Um, one second, you all. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Barbara. I see you said you ordered a signed copy for your library. Hey, everybody, let me make sure that I uh, am getting your new questions. Let me let me ask them, okay? One second, you are. I have a team behind the scenes that's giving me your questions, so I'm not able to necessarily see every uh, everything right here on my screen. I want to make sure that I get your questions. All right? Yeah. Love y'all. Um, uh, oh, hey, Lori. Lori asks, what is my book about? Uh, that's a gr Let me pause for a minute <laughs> and talk about this. Um, this is my book, Make Change. And the, my book is about, uh, Lori, my book is really about two things. It's It tells my personal origin story, if you will, of how I came to care so much about injustice and justice in the world. It talks about my philosophy of how we change the world. But the bulk of the book is is a manifesto teaching you the decisions and tools and resources that you need to change the world yourself. And please purchase a copy everywhere. Um, somebody asked, uh, how do I plan to do the book tour? Will asked, the book tour is, is all online, Will. Most cities won't even allow events and it's not safe. Um, one second. Um, yeah, I see y'all. One second, everybody. Trying to get your new questions. Uh, Monica asked, uh, you see, I hope, uh, the, the book is on Audible right now as well for all of you who want to get it. Um, that's right. Hold on. Let me um, let me see if I can. Let me post the link again. Hold on one second, okay? I'm going to give you all the link. Everybody. Thank you all. Just give me one second. I'm, I'm going to. If you want a signed copy, I just posted a link in the comments there. Uh, you can go right there to get a signed copy, okay? And um, all the proceeds, uh, anything that I earn from this event, I'm donating to one of my favorite organizations, Until Freedom. Yeah, uh, Ramon, I'm I'm watching closely what's happening in Beirut. Uh, let me let me pin it, okay? Um, I just pinned it. Do you see it? There we go. Uh -huh. All right. Thank you all. So if you want to purchase a signed copy, you can purchase the signed copy right at the link that I just pinned. And, um, if you see it, you can purchase a signed copy and I'll sign it for you now. Okay. Um, let me get back to some of your questions. Yeah, Ramon, I see what's happening in Beirut and... I'm watching very closely. In fact, as soon as we finish this live signing, I'm going to go right back to, to making sure that I understand it and see if there's anything I can do to help. Um, if you if you purchase a book and ask a question, um, oh, okay, I see. I see how I can clear some of the questions here. Um, let me make sure that I get these. I see. I see. Um, let me let me do let me do a bit of a speed round of some of your questions. OK, uh, I'm slow. <laughs> I'm slow signing and I'm slow answering your questions. Uh, again, I've pinned the link here. If anybody wants to purchase a signed copy of the book, uh, please do. And uh, thank you all so much. Uh, you can this is you can purchase a signed copy of Make Change at this link. 
and uh, I'll be here till I get through all of your questions, okay? Um, thank you. I love and appreciate you, and thank you so much for your support. Um, I'm going to speed through some of your questions. Uh, Cheryl in San Jose says you're a huge supporter of me and all the work that I do. How do we help convince Bernie supporters uh, uh, who say they won't vote for Biden? You know, I try to tell people uh, to follow Bernie's lead in that regard. Um, my thing is, if Bernie can campaign his ass off all over the country and almost immediately say, I'm going to do everything I can to defeat Donald Trump. And even though Bernie doesn't see eye to eye with Joe Biden on so many things, um, he, he knows that uh, Joe Biden is the only way we can defeat Trump. Uh, Brian in Orlando. Hey, Brian. Brian, let me uh, let me sign some stuff real quick. And uh, for everybody who's here, I pinned a link. If you want a signed copy, of, if you want a signed copy of Make Change, I'll sign it right now for you. Okay. Uh, thank you all so much for for ordering these copies. Uh, the book just came out today. In fact, uh, let me see. Um, let me see what number we are. We're up against some big books right now. So we're number seven in the world right now. But we're up against some heavy hitters uh, in, in a major way, including an Oprah a book club book that just came out, including the book about Donald Trump, including another book by Sean Hannity. So we're all the way up to number seven in the world, but we need your support, okay? Uh, so every every purchase that you make helps us climb those charts as well. Uh, let me take some more of your questions, okay? And uh, even after I finish taking questions, I'll be signing books all day. And so if you want to purchase a signed copy, just do so here. Uh, Brian in Orlando says, how do I manage to stay sane and safe uh, dealing with all the threats? Well, there's a lot of things that I do. Um, I have security. There's security here at the house. They're not in in this room with me, but we have security here at the house. Uh, I go out of my way to be safe physically, to stay safe, to keep my family safe. And um, I'm surrounded by people that I love, who love me, and, and even tell me the truth about the good, bad, and ugly of who I am. And so even, Brian, thank you for the question. Even with all the threats and ugliness, I still have a lot of really good people around me and um, and they really keep it real and keep it honest with me, man. Um, Marguerite, thank you for that question, Brian. Marguerite asked, um, what can you do in Florida? What can you, Marguerite, do in Florida to start helping get the negative and hateful message out, uh, out of Florida and spread peace and educated messages? You know... Marguerite, this book is going to help you a lot because in the book I talk about change, change begins with a decision and I won't take too long with this, but change begins with you, Marguerite, all of us, me, I see questions from Muhammad and Matt and Jamie and Jason, I'll get your questions in a second. You have to decide that there is a problem in the world that you, you want to confront and the two questions that I ask people, and this is for you, Marguerite, is what's the one problem in the world that bothers you so much that it just rips your heart out? It makes you cry. It makes you angry. So for me, it's police brutality and mass incarceration. But for my wife, it's, it's childhood literacy, and she's a literacy expert, and she teaches kids to read uh, in, in, in ways that on, only someone that has her passion could do. But you have to ask yourself, what's the one issue in the world that I'm going to do something about? And you have to make that your issue. I have a whole chapter where I explain that concept in much more detail than I just did. But you eventually have to ask yourself, what's the one thing in the world that breaks my heart? And what's the one thing in the world that I love to do, that I'm gifted to do? And eventually you have to find a way to use your gift to impact the problem that breaks your heart. And that's what I'm trying to do. Uh, one, of my, one of my gifts is writing. 
And so I've written a book and because I care about injustice and mass incarceration and police brutality, I'm going to use the lessons in this book to impact the issues that I care about. And so Margarita just begins with making a decision as long as let me transition with this. Thank you for your question, Marguerite. And we'll send Marguerite will send you a signed copy of my new book, Make Change. And thank you for ordering it. Um, if, if anybody else wants to join Marguerite and purchase a signed copy of the book, you can purchase it right here. OK, uh, I just pinned the link. You can go to premiercollectibles.com slash make change and uh, you can get a signed copy and we'll we'll mail it to you. OK, so thank you all for for purchasing that. Um, yeah. Listen, don't worry about. Uh, thank you, Alicia. Uh, don't get distracted by random trolls in the comments like nobody cares about that. Like it's just a waste of time. Most of these people are not even who who they say they are on here. So I like I literally because I've been me for a long time. I literally just see right through it. <laughs> like it doesn't even bother me. So don't be distracted by that. Uh, Pedro, I follow Kern County very closely. OK, so I'm, I'm, I'm following very closely. Hey, Tiffany, thank you for making the purchase. Monique, that's right. Uh, and thank you for buying a copy. I'm very grateful. Ben, I missed the Tom Jonah Morning Show so much. Uh, ben, thank you for purchasing a signed copy. Uh, it means the world to me, man. Um, yeah, I miss Tom Joyner so much. And I may be doing some more radio. You know, I have my daily podcast, The Breakdown. But I really miss the Tom Jonah Morning Show in so many ways. Um, yeah, thank you all. Thank you all. Thank everybody who has purchased the book. Uh, you can purchase it anywhere books are found. If you go to makechangebook.com, we have all that listed. But if you want a signed copy, I'm signing copies right now. And all the copies are going, uh, will be mailed to you directly. I'm, I'm, these are the actual copies. Uh, just so you know, I don't have the coronavirus. <laughs> um, all of this stuff is sanitized. And there is actually, it sounds funny, but... Um, we go through great links to make sure that everyone touching this is safe and that uh, you will get uh, a safe, sanitized copy of the book. And that's important to me. And, um, you know, uh, COVID-19 doesn't live well on surfaces like this, but to be careful, we've gone to a lot of uh, a lot of links to make sure that we're safe. Um, yeah, Patricia, thank you. Um, yeah, I see some of your questions. Thanks for getting it. Uh, oh, good, Lindsay. You, you're listening. Lindsay, I hope you love the audio book. We've put a lot of effort into it. And I hope, Lindsay, I hope you love all the guest voices in the audio book. So, uh, Diane, thank you for purchasing the book. I'm going to take some more of your questions. But if you want to get a signed copy, I just pinned the link. And you can still get a signed copy right now. And I'm literally going to sign them right this very moment, okay? So thank you so very much, everybody. Um, um, let me see. I uh, I'll try to read your read that article that you posted. Okay, uh, Frank. I, I'm not even sure what you're talking about, Frank. Um, let me get to some of your questions. Uh, Muhammad, who is in uh, Nottingham, uh, in the United Kingdom. Muhammad, I know it's it's uh, later at night there in the UK, but uh, thank you for purchasing a signed book, Muhammad. Um, Muhammad says that Brother Malcolm X is a big inspiration for you and for me as well, Muhammad. Uh, you said he had many powerful messages. Which single message of Malcolm resonates with me the most? You said thank you thank me for my work, and. Um, uh, yeah. Oh, that's you, uh, Usman. Thank you so much, man. Um, which message from Brother Malcolm resonates with me the most? Hmm. You know, I've never thought of him in like reducing like what's the one thing. Um, 
Malcolm was willing to say the hard thing and he was willing to to say the hard truth about Democrats and Republicans. He was willing to speak the hard truth about people in power. And like I have adopted that and kind of made that my own. Um, uh, Usman, if you understand what I'm saying, you know, I don't want to say that Malcolm was fearless because that would mean like that he was not human. He wasn't fearless. He had fears and concerns. Um, but he was always willing to speak hard truths, no matter the impact on his career. And like, I try to speak truth to power, even if it means I don't get invited to a certain, like, I know that I won't, I won't be invited to Joe Biden's white house because I speak a lot of hard truths about Democrats and Republicans. And, you know, I don't want Donald Trump to win re-election, but I also don't want Joe Biden to have a horrible plan for criminal justice reform. And so when I call out his plan and say, listen, Joe Biden needs to make this plan a whole lot better. Um, that's not because I'm voting for Donald Trump. I loathe Donald Trump, but I'm also not going to lie for Joe Biden and I'm not going to pretend like his bad plans are good plans. And a lot of that type of inspiration I, I get from Malcolm. Um, thank you. Thank you, Muhammad. And thank you for getting a copy of the book. Um, yeah, I see your questions. Yeah, I see some new questions coming through as well. Uh, Matt, who is in Albany, California. Matt, thank you for your question. Everybody, if you have not yet purchased uh, you can purchase Make Change anywhere books are sold, but if you want to purchase a signed copy, I'm signing copies right now, and all the proceeds that I would make uh, from this, I'm donating any profits that I get from the sale of these signed copies to my friends at Until Freedom. I, lo I love them and believe in them. Um, so, oh, Usman, there you are, my friend. I didn't know if that was you or not. Yeah, 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 I'm glad I got to your question. Uh, Chris, thank you for getting another copy. I appreciate that. Um, yeah, I see some, some more questions. Uh, these questions that I'm answering now, uh, sorry to be, to be this way. Uh, these questions, we have an interface of people who purchased the book and I'm answering as many of their questions first. And as I can, I'll try to get some of your questions from Facebook as well. Uh, Matt in Albany, California. Matt, thank you for purchasing the book. Matt asks, how can we instill a desire and willingness to fight injustice in our young children? Well, Matt, that's a very important question. And there are two primary ways, maybe three. First is children follow what you do even more than what you say. So if they see you fighting injustice they will care about injustice. If they see that injustice breaks your heart, it will more than likely break their heart. And so children mimic you. They mimic what you say. They mimic what you do. They even mimic how you feel. They are a reflection of us. So first is being a, a great example, Matt. Um, secondly, it is important to teach them, not just with your words, but, but, but show them examples throughout history of people who fight injustice. Give them models to look after, to read, uh, show them films and documentaries. And then lastly, um, when you can take them to, um, to demonstrations and protest, if it ever gets unsafe, leave. Um, but they need to have a moment where they feel like they're a part of something. Uh, even more than that, if your children ever express a desire to protest something, instead of instead of them following you, maybe you can help build their ideas up as well. Thank you for that question, Matt. Uh, Jamie says, um, how do we make change in our country that ends violence? Jamie, that's a very tough question, my friend. Uh, Jamie is in Cold Spring, Minnesota. Jamie, thank you for that. 
The United States is one of the most violent countries in the world. It's violent around the world. Uh, our military is incredibly violent. Um, we, uh, our government sponsors assassinations of leaders. Uh, we have been in uh, wars that were purposeless and killed hundreds of thousands, sometimes even millions of people. It caused refugees, killed men, women, and children. I'm thinking of Iraq and other places where there were no weapons of mass destruction. But the United States, inside of our own borders, Jamie, is also very, very violent. We're the only nation in the world that has more guns than people. And as long as that's the case, uh, this country is going to continue to remain very violent. With gun violence and domestic violence, I say in my book that a recent study showed that the United States is one of the 10 most dangerous countries in the world for women. There are 250 countries. And this is one of the most dangerous countries in the world for women, which is just awful. Uh, Jamie, I said that to say that it's worth fighting to end violence. Um, but it's, it's something that you have to be devoted to over your whole life. And you have to know that you won't be able to end it, but you can drastically reduce it. All right. Thank you for that for that question. Jason in Hillsboro, Oregon. Uh, Jason, thank you. Jason uh, and everybody whose questions I'm taking purchased a signed copy of the book. Uh, thank you. If you want to purchase a, a signed copy, uh, Stephen and others, if you want to purchase a signed copy, if you just click the link that I've pinned, um, let me know. Stephen, do you see the pinned link here? PremierCollectibles.com slash make change. Uh, I'm signing these um I'm signing these book plates, and everybody who wants a signed copy of the book uh will send that to you directly. If you click that link, you can still purchase it now, okay? Uh thank you for that. And I'm taking great. Uh Steven, if you see the link, uh let me know. Yeah, uh, Tatiana, thank you for sharing the link as well. Um, we'll continue to, uh, we'll continue to push it. Okay. Uh, um, someone says that I promoted violence by encouraging people to tear down Jesus statues. Uh, that's, I never said that people should go tear them down. I said that they should come down. Um, Confederate statues, uh, statues of, of Caucasian European Jesus, all of those things are deeply problematic. Uh, good, Stephen. Uh, I'll post the link here again for anybody else who needs it. Um, Christopher, uh, somebody asked me earlier if I, oh, good, Stephen, um, about my book suggestions. Uh, again, if you want to purchase a signed copy of the book, if you just click that link that we've pinned, I'll sign it for you right now, okay? Let me take some more of your questions here. One second. Uh, Marcus, um, in most cities, let, so let me be clear, Marcus. Um, I believe all Confederate statues should be torn down. It would be best if local governments took them down. But if local governments don't take them down, we can look at other methods. But it would be best in most ways, Marcus, if if governments actually took those statues down. Yeah. Thank you, Christopher. Yeah, I appreciate you. Um, let me get to some more of your questions. Um, Jason in Hillsboro, Oregon says, thank you for everything. Thank you, Jason. And we'll send you a signed copy of Make Change as well. Thank you so much, man. Um, Chris in San Francisco asked again, what are my favorite books that I've read and why? Oh, I, I answered that earlier, okay? Let me make sure that I... I get to some new questions here. Uh, Michael in Dallas um, says, you just want to offer your support and thank me for the work that I'm doing. Thank you so much, Michael. And uh, I'm going to sign uh, some more book plates here while I have the chance. I got a text from uh, my staff who said, I need to hurry up and sign some more. <laughs> so uh, let me do that while I can. Um, 
I appreciate all of you. I'm uh, somewhat embarrassed that the that you all get to see my signature because it's so messy. <laughs> uh, but it's me, and this has been the signature that I've had for a very long time. Um, Michael, thank you for your support. Okay, Brienne, um, got your question. One second. Selena, we answered your question. Antoine, we got yours. Um, Stacy, I answered your question. Um, Eric answered that. Okay, here's a new question from Aaron. And um, Aaron is in Zionsville, Indiana. Thank you, Aaron. Aaron, uh, Aaron, thank you for purchasing a signed copy of Make Change. Everybody who's just now getting here, any profits or proceeds from this that I get, I'm donating to one of my favorite civil rights organizations, um, Until Freedom. They're led by Tamika Mallory, Linda Sarsour, uh, Angelo Pinto, my son, and others. They're just brilliant. Uh, Aaron asks, do places like Indianapolis, my brother who recently passed away used to live in Indianapolis, um, do places like Indianapolis have a chance of ever becoming a welcoming city for black people? You said that you live in Zionsville, which is a suburb, and it's so white. How do we get more diversity here? You said your husband, uh, Aaron, your husband, is one of the only black men there in Zionsville, which is outside of Indianapolis. Do we stay and keep making change or go somewhere that is more like us? That, that's, a, that's a great question, Aaron. Um, it's a personal question in the sense that it can be hard. I, you know, my family, we live in Brooklyn and Brooklyn is in, it's one of the most diverse cities in the world. On my block, in my neighborhood, it's deeply, deeply diverse. And New York is like the United Nations. Uh, we've lived in Southern California that was also very, very diverse. So there is real beauty in living in places that have, and you know, I lived, when I lived in Atlanta, Atlanta is now more diverse than it used to be. But diversity is not just black and white. Diversity can, like in New York, Diversity means all types of things. In Brooklyn, we have residents who are literally from over 100 countries, and um, it's like the United Nations, and so it's deeper than just black and white. But the question, Aaron, really gets to, are you willing to, to hunker down and change a place like Zionsville, Indiana, if you feel called to do that, Aaron, yes, you stay. But Aaron, this is just my opinion. And obviously you asked me, so I'll give you my honest thought. If you get a chance, Aaron, to move to a place that has more diversity, that's what I would do. And that's what my family and I have done. Nicole asked, Nicole is coming from Clarksville, Tennessee. Hello, Nicole. And I hope all of you who are here, I hope you get a chance to see this. Um, one second, let me make sure, uh, let me, okay, good. I'm seeing some new questions from you all. Um, hold on. Let me make sure that I, um, Nicole ask, let me make sure that you all can see this. Okay. Nicole asks, what is my greatest source of hope in these times? Um, Nicole, thank you for asking. That's a great question. And, uh, for, for anybody who's just now joining, uh, I am signing copies of my brand new book, Make Change. And, um, all the proceeds go to a great civil rights organization, uh, Until Freedom, all the profits from this. And, uh, I'm working with a great group, Premier Collectibles and Live Signing, and, uh, they are amazing. And I'm signing the copies and we will mail them to you. And I have pinned a link here. If you want to sign copy, uh, I'll sign it for you right here, right now. And uh, if I don't get to all of your questions, I'll continue to sign copies all throughout the evening. So uh, Nicole in Clarksville, Tennessee, Nicole asked, 
what is my greatest source of hope in these times? Um, yes, I, I, I am relying on my book here. But Nicole, I talk about that in the book. And what I say is my greatest source of hope, Nicole, and this may sound strange at first, is history. Because history teaches me that every horrible problem eventually comes to an end. If it's, you know, for for thousands of years uh, in most democracies, women could not vote. Now in virtually every democracy, every true democracy in the world, women can vote. For most of American history, African Americans could not vote. Now African Americans can vote. For over 400 years, there was plantation slavery in this country. Even though we now have mass incarceration, plantation slavery and the transatlantic slave trade is over. History is what gives me hope because I know that no problem is permanent and that even the greatest problems in American history with the right level of organization and determination, the greatest problems uh, can be defeated. So that's that's where a lot of my hope comes from. My hope comes in my understanding of how human history works and how um, people people overcome these problems. So thank you for that. Let me see here. Tex Anna, who is in Stevenson, Washington, has a great question. And uh, for those of you who are just now getting here, um, I am signing uh, copies of... Yeah, James, thank you for getting the audio book. I hope you're going to really enjoy it, man. We put a lot of effort into it. Um, Candace, I'm, I'm, glad, I'm glad you liked that answer. Um, I have just now posted a link to where if any of you want... Thank you, Joel, for the love, man. If anybody wants to purchase a signed copy of this, you can you can purchase it now. Uh, Brian, are you in Brooklyn? I'm I'm in Brooklyn right now, my man. Um, any anybody who wants to purchase a signed copy, if you click the link that I've posted and pinned, uh, you can do so right now. Okay, and uh, yeah, I appreciate you. Um, I'm going to continue to sign uh, the copies of for everybody, and I'm going to. Burn through some questions here. Texana in Stevenson, Washington, thank you for purchasing the book. Texana asked, uh, you said that you moved to rural Washington State in 2016 from Seattle. You said when in Seattle, you said you were able to march next to uh, people of color and the LGBTQ community to show your support. You say now you put your efforts into donations, but you feel like you could still do more and that you feel very isolated by the pandemic. Me, me too, actually. Uh, he says, um, you said, all you want me to know is that your heart, head, and wallet stand with people of color in the LGBTQ community in the world. And you said, just writing this is uh, stifling your feeling of helplessness. Well, thank you, Texana. I hope you get to see me respond to this. Thank you, Texana, for being so amazingly transparent and honest with your feelings. Um, uh, it means the world to me. Um, some of our staff at the Grassroots Law Project live in Seattle, and my family and I love Seattle and Washington. I don't know if you know this, but I, I climbed Mount Rainier, I climbed Mount Baker, and we even thought about moving to Washington. It's a beautiful, beautiful place. But you're right, outside of Seattle and maybe Tacoma, there's not a whole lot of diversity there. And um, and so I appreciate you. Just keep doing what you're doing. And I'm, I'm standing with you, Texana, sending you love. This pandemic will not last forever. Um, it's going to continue way longer than it should. But we will eventually get over this. I know we will. Thank you for that for that thought and statement, Texana. Uh, um, Sherilyn, who is in Doylestown, Pennsylvania, um, this is a great question, Sherilyn. Uh, Sherilyn says, 
how do I get past the lump in my throat? Uh, Sherilyn says that she has strong, passionate human rights views, but you sh you seem to shut right down when somebody opposes you. Uh, she says, Sean, how are you never scared? Sherilyn, I, I deal with fear every single day. Um, don't think for a minute that your favorite leaders aren't still dealing with fear and and doubt and and pessimism uh i i deal with it every single day i just decide that my desire and sherilyn i'm not judging you okay i want you to just hear what i'm saying i have to decide every day i've dealt with fear like even this thing that i'm doing now this is different for me like uh signing books and taking questions like I'm a very private person. So I had to deal with fear even just to get on here to do it. But I have to decide every day. And it's a it's a decision that you don't make once. You make it over and over again. That my desire to see the world changed is greater than my personal fear. And and let me tell you, let me give you a few tricks, Sherilyn, that help me. I have plans. And because I have plans, plans on how I want to see the world changed, plans on people that I want to see elected, plans on policies that I want to that I want to change. A lot of times when I get when I get fearful, I I lean into my plans that it's not all up for me to say something in that moment. And because I'm pursuing goals and plans it helps me overcome fear. I also surround myself. This is very important, Sherilyn. I surround myself with people who are also fighting to overcome their fears, to speak out against injustice, to, to speak out against police brutality and mass incarceration. And then lastly, uh, I do something. I have something called mind movies where I sometimes play certain scenarios in my mind to help me rehearse how I will respond in a certain moment. And Sherilyn, maybe you can rehearse some moments in your mind so that if something stressful comes, you'll already have an answer that you've rehearsed for it, all right? Thank you, uh, Sherilyn, for, for even admitting that sometimes it's hard to overcome that fear I think all of us sometimes are gripped with fear and that's not abnormal, okay? Um, thank you for that. Everybody, if you did not know, if you just now joined, um, I have just a few more questions that I'm answering. I'll, I'll make sure that my team says these are the last questions and I'll rehearse, I'll refresh my browser. You can purchase a signed copy of Make Change right now. I'm actually past time and we'll have to go here in a few minutes. But if you purchase a signed copy now, let me make sure that you have the link. Um, you can, I, I've pinned the link, but you can also, uh, I just posted it in my comments as well. Uh, Brian, thank you for that, man. Um, I'm signing copies and I'll be signing copies all night, okay? So thank you all so much. And um Wow, Christine, you're in Doylestown too. Wow, that is so, the world is so small. Yeah, good to see you. I'm going to keep uh, keep signing, but let me take a few more of your questions, okay? Uh, um, uh, Kira Willis, I hope I pronounced it right. Either Kira Willis or Kyra Willis. I said them both. That way I you, you at least heard me say it right once, okay? You're in Baton Rouge, which I love. Uh, several of my closest friends, including Gary Chambers, uh, and Donnie Rose, who works with us at the North Star, I live in Baton Rouge. Um, you ask, what song gets me up and dancing in my living room? I am a terrible, terrible dancer. I mean, like, um, all, all time worst dancers. So I don't dance, but I'm a huge Nipsey Hussle fan. And anytime you look at the music on my phone, I'm almost always listening to Nipsey Hussle. And uh, he, I knew Nipsey personally. We only had a chance to interact with each other a few times, but I loved his music. And I'm so grateful that I got to tell him 
while he was alive. If you didn't know, Nipsey Hussle was killed in gun violence last year. I got a chance to tell him on two different occasions how much I loved his music and how his music was like the thing that I listened to. And, uh, and he loved that. And, um, so, so, uh, uh, I didn't get a chance to, I don't, I don't dance in my living room. <laughs> uh, every now and then I might dance to make my wife and kids laugh, but, um, but I'm a huge Nipsey Hussle fan. All right. Thank you for that. Uh, Rohit from, uh, Rohit, thank you so much, um, for, for purchasing a copy of, of Make Change. And I'm sorry, I'm just now getting to your question. And if I'm not pronouncing your name uh, correctly, we have someone on our staff whose name is similar to yours, and we would pronounce that Rohit. But if it's Rohit, uh, thank you so much. You're from Rolling Hills, California. And your question is smart. You said, what are my recommendations for non-Black, non-Indigenous people of color in terms of being a good ally? So that's a question that I don't get a lot, but I understand it. Um, again, the question is, how do people of color who aren't black or aren't indigenous Americans, how, do they, how are they good allies? And thank you for asking that. Um, first, uh, there are probably three ways that I would answer that. Uh, let, me, let me do a quick signing real quick. Um, thank all of you who purchased books to be signed, and, and I can't wait for you to get them. Um, I'm deeply grateful and honored that you, you cared enough to even purchase a book. Um, there, there are several ways to... Uh, let me make sure I got it. Yeah, thank you all. Oh, oh, Serena, Serena, I see you said you were a terrible dancer too. It's okay. Um, Ruth asked, uh, how could you purchase your book on Amazon? But um, uh, how could how could you get that signed? If you hold on to it, eventually I'm going to do, eventually we will do an in-person tour and I'll sign all the books that I can all over the country, okay? So eventually I want to sign everybody's books. Um Back to back to the question. First, if you are a non-indigenous, uh, non-black person of color, that is, if you are from from India or Asia uh, or, or Japan or or other or other places, uh, but you're not indigenous or black. First, it is there are three things that I would say. Uh, educate yourself on the struggles of, of oppression that are unique to indigenous Americans, that are unique to African Americans. The first thing that I would say is study and research. Okay, so that you're not going into rooms. This is for all of you who are listening. Don't go into rooms dumb, where you've done no research, no preparation. You don't have to be a guru. You don't have to be an expert, but please, do some research, do some reading, read my book, read other smart books, read how to be an anti-racist, read other books that can edify you and teach you about the world. That's number one. Second, join organizations that are led by African Americans and indigenous Americans and just be a supporter. Don't, don't fight to be a leader, just be there and be a supporter. And lastly, and I can answer, I can say much more, donate to organizations that are managed and, and run by African Americans and indigenous people. Uh, donate to them, support them financially, chip in uh, to help fund their work. All right. Um, Tara, who is in Ardmore, Pennsylvania. Hello, Tara. Um, Tara asked the question, how much did Malcolm X inspire me? So much. Um, somebody asked me this question last night, Tara. And for those of you who are just not getting here, I'm signing copies of my new book, Make Change. Uh, this is not a money-making venture. I don't get paid from signing them. I don't even get paid from the, from the sales of the book. Uh, I've already been paid to write it. I'm selling the book now because I want you to have it and I believe in it. Uh, I poured my heart and soul. It's, it's 272 pages. 
and I pour my heart and soul into this. And so thank you so much for everybody who's purchased it. Um, Malcolm X inspired me so much. Um, when I was a student leader at Morehouse, um, which is where Martin Luther King went to school, Dr. King inspired me in amazing ways as well. But so much of my early leadership style I got from Malcolm. And um, I've become friends with his daughter, Ilyasa, who has a speaking role in my audio book. But uh, Malcolm has, um, I am now one year older than Malcolm was when he passed away, when he was killed. And um, he gave every ounce of his life to trying to, to fight for people, to fight against injustice, mm -hmm. and um, was just deeply inspired by him. Let me see, this may be, um, this is from Dawn, who is in Seattle. Uh, let me let me do a quick refresh to make sure these are all the questions. Oh no, there are a lot more questions. <laughs> okay, okay, I'm gonna get, um, uh, I'm gonna get to all the questions. Dawn, let me get to yours. Hold on here, let me pace myself. Uh, hold on one second. I'm going to ask my team if it's okay for me to go on. Appreciate you all. Thank you for your patience. Oh, Dawn, I hope I didn't lose your question. I'm scrolling for your question, Dawn. Dawn, I saw some of your question and you asked about how to help your child navigate this crazy world with grace and dignity. Dawn, that's a beautiful question. Um, the fact that you asked the question that way tells me that you have grace and dignity. Um, I'll say to you what I said to someone earlier, Dawn, you, your children mimic you more than anything else. And so they follow what we do. They follow our example. They do hear our words, but demonstrating for them what it's like to live with grace and dignity is important. And then, and Dawn, I'll say again, what I said to someone else earlier, give them historic examples that you are inspired by of people who also have the grace and dignity that you're speaking of, all right? Uh, let me get to, let me get to some of the questions here. Oh, okay. Uh, here's the question. Oh, Dawn, you said that this, thank you, Dawn, uh, uh, Rob from my team found your question. You said this book is going to be a gift for your five-year-old daughter, Avery. Uh, Dawn, I don't know if you're listening, but I am so, so grateful uh, for you and for for Avery. So thank you so very much. Uh, please tell Avery hello from me and uh, from from the King family, all seven of us. But Dawn, um, it takes a lifetime to raise our child. And, and Dawn, we don't stop being parents even when our children become adults. Two of my children are now adults. I have an 18 year old and a 20 year old. And I'm still parenting them and we're still leading them and teaching them. So, so Dawn, thank you for your question and, and tell little Avery that I said hello. And uh, Dawn, Avery may actually like some of the music in the audio book. So get the audio book too if you can, okay? Yeah, God bless you both. Okay, okay, thank you. Thanks, Rob, for that save there. <laughs> okay, um... Uh, Pete from Hyde Park, New York. Pete, are you here? Pete asks, how will our Jets do this year? Terrible, Pete. Pete, the, the Jets are going to do a terrible job. <laughs> it's just true. Pete, uh, Pete asked, how will the New York football Jets do this season? Terrible. They've signed, they, they traded away some of their best players. Um, they've got a lot of draft picks in return, but I don't expect they're going to do much this year, Pete. I'm sorry. 
Pete, we're still sending you a signed copy of Make Change, but I don't think the Jets are going to do super well this year. Uh, maybe they've lowered expectations, Pete, and so maybe they'll surprise us. That's the only thing that's possible. Uh, for those of you who are just joining, uh, I am I am signing copies of Make Change for you all. Um, uh, listen, listen. There's no need. Uh, I see people in the comments when people come in here saying Sean King is white. They literally want to distract you. Uh, <laughs> you have to ignore it. It's foolishness. It's meant to distract you. Look at me. Watch me. Don't get caught up in the comments. Okay. Uh, I've addressed that so many times over and over and over again uh uh thank you uh des for for purchasing the book um i just posted in the comments uh a link where if anybody wants to purchase a signed copy of make change you can do that right now appreciate you so so much uh tatiana thank you send your 10 year old my love as well uh yeah appreciate you all now let me get let me get you some more questions and I'm going to try to get to as many of them as I can. It's a lot of questions. Um, Jennifer asks, what do I believe is the most worrisome thing in our country right now? Uh, I have an answer for that, Jennifer. The thing that troubles me most about our country right now is that we appear to be unwilling to, to make hard decisions to change the systems that are failing us. So our policing systems are failing us. Mass incarceration is failing us. Our immigration systems are failing us. Our public health during this pandemic, our public health systems are failing us. But both Democrats and Republicans, I'm gonna turn the air on in this room, uh, both Democrats and Republicans no longer seem willing to do the hard work to, to put forth. So like Medicare for all, universal health care would solve so many of our public health problems, but Democrats and Republicans won't support it, even though almost 70% of all Americans now say, yes, we wanna be like the rest of the developed world and have universal health care. So, of course, problems about mass incarceration and, and police brutality bother me the most. But what really bothers me, Jennifer, that's Jennifer in Lake Worth, Florida, what really bothers me is our country's unwillingness to pursue deep systemic solutions to our problems. It's, it's a real thing. Um, I'm going to sign some books for a minute. I'm sorry if uh, it may be a little boring to... Uh, to just watch me sign, but I'm uh, I'm super, super grateful for each of you who purchased copies of Make Change today. Uh, I literally could not do this work that I do without you. And uh, I thank you so very much for your support. Um, when I sign my signature, I try to at least make sure that you can, uh, you can make out the S in Sean and the K in King. <laughs> Um, uh, someone, uh, Ann from Brainerd, Minnesota says, am I retiring at the end of the year? Uh, no, I can, I am definitely not retiring. Uh, I'm going to have to work. I have two kids in college and three more on their way. Uh, I'm going to be working uh, for a very long time. <laughs> Thank you, Ann. Um, uh, Paul asks, uh, how do I speak so freely and escape the mob? You said you would lose your job, unfortunately. This is Paul from, from New York. Uh, you said, thank you for bringing back freedom of speech. Well, Paul, uh, I there are consequences even to the way I speak, Paul. Um, you know, like you'll notice I'm not on CNN. I'm not on MSNBC. Uh, they don't cover my work in the New York Times or the Washington Post. Um, because I speak so freely and critique people from both parties and critique corporations, um, there are a lot of doors that are closed to me. So even for me, speaking freely comes with consequences. 
but I love that freedom. I've also built my life so that I can speak freely and at least still provide for my family. I have my own podcast and other things that help me pay the bills and, and, and provide for my family. I was paid to write this book. Um, I loved writing it and I spoke the whole truth and nothing but the truth in here, but writing it also allows me to provide for my family and, and my publisher is fine with me being outspoken and, uh, and they've supported me through it all. So thank you to my publishers and editors for real. Uh, thank you for that, Paul. Um, we're having a storm right now in New York. So the lights are going in and out just a little bit. Um, for everybody who is just now getting here, uh, I'm signing copies of my new book, Make Change. And, uh, oh, oh, some of you, uh, I see Usman, uh, I have a, I have a Boys in the Hood poster here. Uh, we have a Black Panther poster here. I actually have a Malcolm X poster right here to the side. And I have a Goonies poster over here as well, which is like one of my childhood, uh, favorite movies. And, um... This is a room where our family watches some movies in. And so we just have uh, posters of some of our favorite movies. Um, one second. I got some text from uh, from family. Um, yeah. Yeah, appreciate you all. Hold on. Let me check on the book real quick while we're here, okay? Um, yeah. Great. Appreciate you all. Hold on, everybody. Just checking some stuff out real quick. Uh, love and appreciate everybody. Thank you for your support. Um, so our book is still hanging in at number seven in the world. And uh, I am super, super pumped and grateful. There's some really huge books. I, I never even heard of these books. That there's one book that's ahead of me that has 59,000 reviews. Mind blown. <laughs> there's an Oprah, a brand new Oprah book club book. I'm not sure I'm going to be able to beat that. Uh, thankfully, something has just now pushed Sean Hannity out of first place. Uh, that gives me some love and uh, some excitement. But if you want to purchase a signed copy of my book, um we are we have a pinned link and um thank you priscilla for for your prayers it means the world to me i just posted another link as well uh curtis and others thank you so much for your love uh appreciate you all karen thank you for ordering a copy it, mean, it means the world to me um let me let me get to your questions here <laughs> Uh, uh, Nicholas from Likens, Pennsylvania asks, why aren't Republicans fighting harder for our democracy? Man, that's a great question. Nicholas, um, you know, at the moment in which they endorsed Donald Trump, um, you know, they threw a lot of principles and values like, we can say it was all fake, but when I was growing up, Republicans said they cared about this value and that value, and we could debate whether or not it was real. But now Republicans can no longer even say it was real because they endorsed a man who has no integrity, no values. But Republicans are fighting against voting, voter safety, voter integrity, equal access to voting all over the country because they know that if more Americans vote, they'll never win again. That's the that's the real answer to that. Uh, let's see. Um, let me get to some more of your questions. Dennis in Prairie Village, Kansas. This is a great question, Dennis. And my whole book is an answer to your question. And I'm not just saying that because I'm selling it. I wrote the book 
to answer the question that Dennis asked me. Dennis in Prairie View, Kansas asked, how did we manage to get where we are? Is it ambivalence? And what can we do to stop it uh, when, when people are never held accountable? And so, Dennis, my answer to that question in my book is that countries drift into the dips they find themselves in. It feels like it happens overnight, but it happens over a period of weeks and months and years. Hold on one second. Uh, okay. Oh, okay, I, I'm. Uh, they want me to refresh my page real quick. One second to get all the questions. Um, Don, we got your question. Um, but Dennis. It takes countries a long time to get where we are, where we are now with Trump, where we are with our horrible response to the coronavirus. And um, because I only have a few minutes left, I'm not going to be able to answer it in as much detail as I want. But uh, Dennis, I'm glad I'm going to be able to send you this book because the whole book is an answer to that question. Um, let me sign some more for a moment, if you don't mind, everybody. Um let me see. I just want to check something out real quick. Um, appreciate everybody and thank you for your support and, and kind words. Um, yeah, this has been super cool. Uh, oh, I'm just now looking at uh, I, I this whole time. I haven't been able to see myself and I now see a copy of I see myself. So I see my Boys in the Hood and Black Panther poster there. So I get the question. Uh, Benedict asks, after the pandemic, will I do a speaking tour that will include Baltimore? Yes, Benedict, absolutely. Um, uh, Matthew in uh, uh, Opelika, Florida, asked, how did my experience at, at Morehouse influence what I do now? Matthew, I have a whole chapter of my book where I talk about Morehouse, and uh, it had a huge, huge impact uh, on me, on um, on the way I see leadership. Um, the biggest, the biggest impact that Morehouse had on me was that I was able to be a confident leader at Morehouse. Uh, Morehouse is a school for young black men, and where I grew up in rural Kentucky. There were very few opportunities for me to be a leader. When I got to Morehouse, the students and staff and faculty at Morehouse just embraced me in a major way. And uh, I was student government president at Morehouse. And I just got to experiment. I got to lead meetings. I got to speak in front of thousands and thousands of people often. And uh, a lot of who I am, I became that when I was a student at Morehouse. Thank you, Matthew, for that question. And thank you, Matthew, for purchasing a copy of my book, Make Change. Appreciate each and every one of you. Uh, everybody, hold on just one quick second, all right? All right. I had to make sure the plug to the computer was still was still working. Thank you, Matthew, for that question. Um, Dale asked a great question. Um, uh, how do I balance fighting for social justice with my personal life without neglecting either? Dale is in Washington, DC. Thank you, Dale, for that question. Uh, for everybody who's just now joining, um, we are, um, we are, if you go now to the link that I just posted, um, yeah, Tracy, I'm yeah, Tracy, thank you for the update on Beirut. I'm watching it closely. Um, I am signing copies of my new book, Make Change, and all of the proceeds are going to a brilliant civil rights organization. So thank you for that. Um any profits that I make from the sale of this book or any uh of of the tour 
I'm donating either those to black owned bookstores or the civil rights organizations. Betty, take care. All right. Appreciate you, Betty. Thanks for being here. Um, let me take a few more questions. Okay. While we still have some time here, let me, uh, let me refresh the page first. Um, Oh, Dale, Dale asked, how do I balance fighting for social justice with my personal life without neglecting either? Um, well, Dale, I, I'm just okay at that. Um, I will share a principle, Dale, that I, I may, may, I don't remember if I wrote about this in my book or not. I think I do. I have a book on self-care. I mean, a chapter on self-care and there's a principle, Dale, if you're, if you're listening to this called choosing to cheat. And the principle is this every day in life, something gets cheated. It could be your health. It could be your job. It could be your family. It could be your mental health. Um, it could be your rest, your sleep. And the primary principle of this book, choosing to cheat is you have to choose what gets cheated in your life. And that if you don't choose what gets cheated, the world will often choose for you. And it will normally be something that causes you great harm. And um, I don't want that for any of you. And uh, so every day I have to choose what gets cheated in my life. And sometimes my family gets cheated. And I hate to say that. Sometimes my work gets cheated and other commitments that I have get, they get cheated, but I would rather choose it than just walk and lead aimlessly through life, not making the choice. I hope that makes sense, Dale. Thank you for your question. Um, yeah, getting so many good questions from you all. If you have not yet purchased a signed copy of the book, you can purchase it now and I'll still sign it for you. I'll be signing books all night. So just purchase at the link that I've shared. And uh, I'm grateful for uh, for all of your questions as well. I just posted the link again in the comments. Um, let me get to a few more of your questions as well, okay? Um, no, Ben, uh, today, is, uh, today shouldn't be the last day to purchase a signed copy, okay? So just purchase it whenever you can and we'll get it to you. Um, Joyce is in Culloden, Georgia. I hope I pronounced that right, Joyce. Uh, Joyce asks, do I have any recommendations for people who are living in rural areas who want to fight racism and injustice? That's a great question, Joyce. You know, I grew up in a rural town in Kentucky and I talk a lot about it in my book. And, um, you know, you know, first and foremost, Joyce, you can impact the people who live in your town by impacting the people who are in your family. Um, you know, I saw a brave, I don't know if you all saw this viral video of this man, uh, a young man, he could have even been a teenager who was standing, he was in a town that many people think is one of the most racist towns in America, outside of the headquarters of the KKK. And he was standing there just with a Black Lives Matter sign. And he was harassed and, and, and yelled at and heckled by everybody who went by. And he was so courageous. And so, Joyce, you, you could do that, but you could also have hard conversations with your closest relatives who you know need to have somebody say the hard truths to them. The thing is about family is that you didn't choose your family but you get to impact them over time. And people who have racist views of the world are very slow to change, but if they're in your family, you can impact them over time. Uh, you can also organize people in some really powerful ways too. Joyce, even in rural America, there are people who are fighting for change and, and um, I hope you find some smart ways to fight for Black Lives Matter and to do some things that really impact people. Thank you, Joyce. Uh, we have just a few more questions. I see some new questions that are coming in. Uh, I absolutely have to leave in 17 minutes. 
And so if you have not yet purchased a copy of a signed copy of the book, you can purchase it right now. Uh, I would be super honored um, to to sign a copy for you. I'm signing copies right now. In fact, let me sign some. Um, and we're going to get these out to you as soon as humanly possible. It may take a little bit of time for them to get to you. When I sign the copies, I then sign them to the team that's processing the orders. And they then uh, have to, to take them from there. So please give it a little bit of time. Uh, in between now and then, if you want to get an e-copy or the uh, the audio book, I would really love for you to hear the audio book. It's, on, it's at audible.com now. Um, man, you all are from all over the country and you have, you have such great questions. Um, Edward, who's from the Bronx right here in New York, just, just maybe 15 miles from where I am right now. Edward asks, how can we reach people to understand that the two party system is not the solution to our problems? Well, Edward, I also, I don't believe the two party solution is an effective solution for our problems clearly we have so many problems and if the two-party solution solved our problems we wouldn't be here right now but uh the united states is very much addicted to the democratic and republican parties and there has not really been an effective third party in our lifetime and um i wish it would be built you know you have politicians like Bernie Sanders who are really independent, but um, it is really, really hard to develop an effective third or fourth or fifth party in this country. Edward, you, as you may know, most of the world doesn't have two parties. Most of the world has multiple parties and new parties rise up and fall all the time. Good question, Edward. Uh, Lorraine asked a, a very interesting question. Lorraine asks, how important do I think it is that people of color participate in home ownership? And what can we do to change the system in order to, to increase home ownership? Well, less than I think home ownership is urgent. There is a, an enormous wealth gap, Lorraine, Lorraine and Fresno. Thank you for purchasing the book, Lorraine. Um, there's a huge wealth gap. And what I do what I do believe, Lorraine, is that part of the way we close the wealth gap between white Americans and everybody else, home ownership is a big part of that. Uh, sadly, our economy is in such a horrible place right now that even though interest rates on home loans are the lowest they've ever been, uh, because people's employment is so un unsteady and unreliable right now, uh, home ownership is going to be very, very difficult. But, but thank you for that question, Lorraine. Um, just a few more questions and I've got to run and I am, I am going to do my very best to get to all of them. Uh, for those of you who just now got here, uh, please, uh, if you have not already purchased a copy of the book, uh, Siobhan, uh, I am... Siobhan asked, how can we get a signed copy? Siobhan, I just posted a link and I pinned the link. Siobhan, you can purchase the copy right now and I'll literally sign it right now as well. Um, in fact, let me let me sign. I can sign eight more uh, right now before we go. Um, if you purchase a signed copy, if you just click the link, you can purchase a signed copy and uh, I'll get it to you right away. All right. Uh, appreciate all of you for uh, for what you're doing and, and for your support one second okay and then we'll close with our questions um, you know before the coronavirus hit we did indeed somebody asked if I plan to to come to Europe for the book tour we have we were thinking through an international tour but uh, right now it's it's really difficult and so for the foreseeable future, thank you, Siobhan. I, I appreciate you for purchasing it. Um, for the foreseeable future, everything is going to be virtual, but we are going to do some events around the world. Um, uh, Dallas, who is in Red Deer, Alberta, 
uh, Dallas, you said that you purchased this book for your husband, Dre. Uh, this breaks my heart, Dallas. Uh, Dallas, you, you purchased this book for your husband, Dre, who is 24 years old, and he's serving life without parole for a juvenile crime in Illinois. You asked me, can I speak to how we can make change for juveniles, for children who are subject to de facto life without parole sentences? Um, Dallas, you said a lot there. And uh, uh, Dallas, I'm so glad that you purchased this book for Dre. Please, Dallas, if you're listening, please tell Dre uh, hello. Uh, Dallas, you, and, and those of you who are watching, maybe you didn't know, but I worked for years in jails and prisons as a full-time teacher. And uh, I have a huge heart for incarcerated men and women, uh, including your husband, Dre. And um, the Supreme Court ruled just recently, uh, just a few years ago, that juvenile life without parole is unconstitutional. Of course it is. But what states have done is to say, oh, okay, okay, we won't convict a child. That's what, when we say juvenile, it's just a way to say child. We won't give a child life in prison without parole, but we will sentence them to 80 years. So they don't say life anymore. They just say 60 years. So what Dallas is saying, and I'm, I'm probably right here, she's saying that her husband, Dre, doesn't have a life without parole sentence because that's now unconstitutional. But she said he has basically de facto life without parole. In other words, he's gotten a sentence that will basically take him his whole life to complete. And, um, and uh, Dallas, um, thank you for sharing that story. Um, there's so much that we have to do to, uh, to fight back for Dre and other people all over the country and around the world who are experiencing this. Um, Dallas, if you have a chance, email me at seanking at gmail.com and I'm going to give you a more thoughtful answer. We're running out of time here and I wish I had gotten to your question earlier. Uh, I'll even talk with our staff at the Grassroots Law Project on how we can do more about that as well. Dallas, thank you for your question and please send Dre and Dre's family, your family, my love and, and thank you for purchasing this book for him, okay? If you have any trouble getting it to him, uh, please let me know and we'll do everything we can. If we have to send it from another bookseller, we will, okay? Thank you, Dallas. Um, just a few more questions and I only have a few more minutes. For those of you who are here, I am signing books uh, right now. If you want to purchase a signed copy, you can. Uh, I am, I am going to post all the links here. I have pinned the link and I just posted the link in the comments as well. Uh, but thank all of you uh, who, um, yeah, I see your comments. Um, yeah, thank you. Thank you to all of you who purchased it. I'm, I'm deeply grateful. Um, Dolores, Dolores says that she works in the Virginia juvenile justice system. And you say, while you've made drastic changes at the state level, the issue starts at the local level. Judges, Commonwealth attorneys or district attorneys, public defenders and schools. Does my book discuss making change at those levels? Absolutely. Dolores, I hope you're still here. My book is really about local change, Dolores. And I hope that I hope that you are inspired and instructed by every word that's here. So thank you so much. Um, I have just... I'm going to refresh my page, but I think I have just two more questions to take uh, and just time for two more questions. But I'll sign books for all of you, even if we don't get time to answer your questions. OK, uh, Alicia or Alicia, one or the other in North Hollywood, California, uh, you say, as you as I know, racism is a huge problem in Latin America as well. Would I consider hosting more discussions? with some of the powerful Afro-Latino voices doing similar work? Yes. Uh, second question, do I know any organizations in Los Angeles that I would recommend that you volunteer for? Yes, I do as well. Um, 
I work very closely with Black Lives Matter Los Angeles. I'm friends with uh, the leader of Black Lives Matter Los Angeles, Dr. Molina Abdullah, and uh, I love her like a sister and believe in her leadership. So when you get a chance, Google Black Lives Matter Los Angeles. Just know I trust them and believe in them. They are doing active protest now that could really use your support. Thank you, Alicia, for uh, for your question. Last question, and then I, I've got to run. This was only supposed to be an hour, but we've done it for two. Um, Jamie from Grand Rapids, Michigan. Jamie, I'm not sure if you're still here, but thank you so much. Jamie, you are last but not least. Thank you for purchasing a copy of my book. For all of you who want a signed copy, I'm signing them right now, and uh, I'll continue to sign them. Uh, oh, oh, good. There, there you are. There's your. Yeah, I'm. I'm glad I got to your question. Uh, Janae, thank you. Yeah, thank you, Janae. I appreciate you. Uh, Victoria, thank you for purchasing as well. Um, I'm gonna purchase. I'm gonna put a link in here one last time for anybody. Uh, anybody who wants to get a signed copy. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, I know. I know what you're talking about, Gene. So if you want to purchase a signed copy, you can do so now. And uh, I'm I'm signing them right now, and uh, and I'm super honored to be able to do so. Uh, this is the last question that I have time for. Love and appreciate all of you. I'm gonna if you go to makechangebook.com, I'm gonna be doing events all over the country for the next month, and I hope to see you all at those events as well. Jamie asks. Jamie says, I am doing my best to raise a biracial black son who is seven on your own. Jamie says that uh, you are white and uh, Jamie's white. She says, I can be mom and dad, but I can't be black. Jamie says, I give him as much exposure to black culture as I can. I enrolled him in a school district near me that's as diverse as any of the suburb schools. Um, you said, the more diverse districts don't offer as many opportunities. We talk about real issues all the time. I just don't want him to only know what I or what you, Jamie, have to offer. Jamie, thank you for that very transparent question. Jamie, as you may know, I talk about my mother. So this is going to encourage you, Jamie. Um, I talk about my mother in my book and uh, my mother's white and my mother was a lot like you. She was a single mother who raised me the best that she knew how who taught me a lot about loving people and standing up for people, but she could not prepare me for the world that I was going into when it, when it came to race. And I talk about how so many other black families really took me under their wing. So there are probably two things. There are three quick things that I want to say to you, Jamie, and I hope this is insightful for others of you who are listening. First, Jamie, you don't have to tell your young son everything about how horrible the world is okay the world is ugly and your seven-year-old i have i have a seven-year-old and she doesn't know a lot about police brutality and racism we we isolate our seven-year-old from a lot of the ugliness so don't think that to raise a black child means to tell them about all the people that hate them and think things about them there, there's more to raising a black child than telling them about racism and bigotry, okay? That's number one. Number two, it would be very helpful if if any members of, if any black members of his family are willing to be supportive of him in any way, uh, grandparents, aunts, uncles, other things, okay? If there's a way for you to be a bridge, even if you don't have a good relationship with his father, if there's a way for you to still introduce your son to the black members of his family that can help him in real practical ways, I would strongly encourage that. And um, and then last but not least, um, there are practical things that you can do. It, this, these are simple things. There are books about this as well from taking your son to the black barbershop, to, to, to playing music, to reading books. There, there are ways you can expose your son to culture. 
But here's the, the last thing I want to say is this. Do not allow your son to be in places where he is being damaged by by racism and bigotry. Um, like if you see that, it's your job as a parent to intervene. And there are lots of talks that black families give our children. And in some ways, white families have to give those talks as well. What I really want to encourage you though, Jamie, is as a mother, it's your job to protect your son and uh, just do your best to protect him and raise him the best you can there in Grand Rapids. Uh, I'm rooting for you and appreciate you in every way. Listen, um, Jamie, thank you for purchasing the book. Everybody, I've got to run. I have uh, I have gone over. Uh, yeah, Gordon says it. Um, build your community in support of your son. Yeah, great, great comments and thoughts here as well. Mentors, other things. Everybody, I just reposted the link if you want to purchase a signed copy. Um, uh, I, I enjoyed this time with you. Um, you know, it means a lot to me to be able to hang out with you. I see there are 330 of us that have kind of been here. Um, super, super grateful. Uh, if you have not yet purchased a copy, you can go to Make Change Book. The book, the book is now available everywhere. I poured my heart and soul into this. Uh, you can get the audio book. You can get a signed copy here. But uh, thank you all so, so much for your love and support. All right. I've got to run. I'm going to be doing more events all, all over the country, uh, hopefully in your city. All the events will be virtual, but I'm making them super, super local. All right. Love you all. Appreciate you. Take care, everybody.